But I want you to think about this. You've met Ahmed al-Rashidi, right? Yeah. So Ahmed al-Rashidi is his brother. He's a Moroccan. I visited him recently. His nickname in Guantanamo was the General. I don't want you to think that when we talk about forgive, we're not talking about forgiving those who oppressed us and continue to oppress people around the world. I have no right to forgive anybody who oppresses someone else. I don't want you to think of us as walkovers. If that's the impression you're getting, what I'm going to tell you now, I hope this will settle that. Ahmed al-Rashidi is called the general. That wasn't a title. He's not a general. He's a chef. He's a cook. That title was given to him by American officers in Guantanamo. And the reason why he, he was given this title, I want you to understand this, is that Ahmed al-Rashidi was a leader, a born leader. But he wasn't a leader in, in any, you know, uh, in a fight or with Mujahideen or with the military. He was a leader in Guantanamo. And the reason why he was a leader is because he thought outside the box. When they ripped the Quran into pieces and threw it onto the floor and spat upon it and urinated on it in front of our eyes, you know what Ahmed al-Rashidi said? He said, brothers, any of you who have a Quran in your cell, give it back to the oppressor. That doesn't mean we don't want to learn the Quran. After all, it's the most, as you can see from what I quote, it is the most beloved thing to us as the prisoners. It's the only thing that we hold on to. Everything else doesn't matter. You can abuse my body, but not the Quran. Ahmed al-Rashidi said, give it back. He organized the brothers to do that. He's not an Islamic scholar. He, he doesn't, I don't think he's even memorized the Quran, but he is smart. Give it back, brothers, and those who've memorized the Quran teach those who haven't. The old, original way, the prophetic way. And I'll tell you something else about Ahmed al-Rashidi. They needed six to seven people to come in to extract him from his cell. They come in with a shield and body armor and uh, helmets, and they try to storm in. Ahmed al-Rashidi says to them, you're going to take me, but not before I take one of you. And he was true to his promise every time. The first soldier that came in that he got hold of, that soldier cried for the rest of the week. And if you know Ahmed al-Rashidi, you'll know that even to look at him is not a guy you want to mess with. You know that. That's Ahmed al-Rashidi. Let me tell you about another brother, Shakir Amr, who's my best friend. He's from Saudi Arabia. He was held in Guantanamo for 14 years. He led the hunger strikes. Ahmed al-Rashidi was known as the, the general. Shakir Amr was known as the professor because he used to play with people's minds. And I'm talking about the American soldiers, not us. And he would lead the brothers in hunger strikes for years. Some people lost, Shakir lost more than half of his body weight. If you'd know him, he's like a huge big brother. When, when, he, when he came out of Guantanamo, he's slimmer than me. And he would say, look at his justice. They'd beat him up and he'd fight back. He'd organize the brothers to fight back. But he would say, the first time I did an interview with the guy who opened Guantanamo, his name is Major Mike Lennart. He's a, um, sorry, a Major General of the US Marines. He said, if you speak to him, tell him from me that I wish you the very best because of how you treated us. Look at that. He's saying to this guy who opened Guantanamo, he said, the reason why is because this guy was the only one who treated us with humanity. He's the one who came and, and went and made a phone call to my family who I hadn't seen all of this time and told me about the birth of my son, Faris. He came along, he sat on the floor, on the dust, and he distributed chocolates to all the prisoners. He said, so when you speak to this man, tell him my very best warm regards. That's from his enemy. See the beautiful thing about the Guantanamo prisoners? Is they know how to fight, like most people don't. But Ahmed Rashidi now, you know what he says? He says, now I'm a free man, I invite all of my American soldiers who are the guards, I invite them to my restaurant, because he really is a chef. Right? So I just want you to understand that. None of the prisoners are a walkover. 